Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the box stop. Thank you. My name is Brian Kennard. I'm the director here at the box stop. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you here on this snowy Sunday evening. Hopefully, you all have uh, made it here smoothly without any uh, any issues. Uh, so yeah.
nice work if you can get it, and you can get it if you try. Strolling with that one girl, sighing, sighing like you feel. It's nice work if you can get it, and if you get it. Jeffrey Slater. Mr. Eric Everett on the drums. It's nice work if you can get it, and you can get it if you try. Strolling with that one girl, sighing, sigh after sigh. Hey, hey. Nice work if you can get it, and if you can get it if you try. 
Props to you, sir, for saying my name correctly. My name is Laura Kamara, which uh, thank you so much for coming out to the Bop Stop. I'm from Columbus, Ohio, so I'm not from Cleveland, but I thank you very much for having me here. This is my only my second time playing in Cleveland and second time uh, doing a, a nice grown-up gig with these fellas. <laughs> so um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm from Columbus, like I said, and... Uh, my, my family's from around these parts, but a little bit further away, a little town called Alliance. And we got some people from Alliance here tonight. Woo! Woo. <laughs> yeah. The one guy in that town is here. <laughs> How's it going, Jake? <laughs> so um, thank you so much for coming out. We are uh, attempting to pay tribute to one of the great singers, um, Sarah Vaughn. Uh, who was called the Divine One, and if you've ever listened to her records, you you know why. The way she would sort of weave things with her voice and play with melodies. And so my approach is not to sound exactly like her because I don't believe you can do that as a singer. But what I want to illustrate this evening is the way that she could play with melody and time and space and sort of find this way to transfix an audience. Just hold them right here and just take a song as slow as you could possibly take it and it's still not boring. With everything she's doing, there's intention. And so rather than give a history lesson of she was born in Newark, New Jersey in such and such year, I would actually rather just illustrate what I learned from her, which is how to weave a song and how to use these different parts of your voice and these different timbres and to pay attention to the lyrics and, and play with them and what you do with the melody. And that was what made her so very special. And also what I loved about her was her band had to really, really be listening and really be with her because she would just take the music so many unexpected places. And so I really enjoy working with these gentlemen um, because they really allow me to do that. So please give it up for Mr. Ed Ridley, <laughs> Jeffrey Slater, and Eric Everett. Um, thank you so much. So we're gonna keep moving with some songs and uh, I might do some things a little different. I might be able to start this.
everybody staying healthy this year? <laughs> Why'd you laugh? That's not funny. <laughs> so after New Year's, I, I came down with a, one of the bugs coming around. Thank God it wasn't COVID. But, uh, and, uh, yeah, Mama's still catching her voice and breath because uh, for a while I sounded like I had a stoma. <laughs> so, but um, I'm so thankful to be here and to be singing with these fine folks. We're going to do one of these fun. Sarah actually had a really interesting repertoire. And you can definitely hear, I was, we were talking a little bit before, some of the songs that the producers would have her do on the record label. And then some of the ones where she's like, I'm going to stretch it out a little bit and show that I have some chops. And it's one of those that if, if you know Sarah Vaughn, a lot of people tend to know her for those kind of like Nat King Cole for those schmaltzy string orchestrated 1950s recordings of standards. But she would pull a few out that would be some straight hip jazz. And this is one of those. This is a Horace Silver tune called Doodle. Using the phone booth, making a few calls, doing the weird things, using the booth walls. Got me a big date, waiting for my cat, putting his vi on so he can look that. I enjoy procrastinating, cause I'm busy while I'm waiting to do no way. Sitting, dining, dinner beginning, starting designing, using the linen. Talking to my man, doodling in my bed. Waiter got salty and tell him to please quit. Told the waiter, don't be busy, can't you see? I'm very busy, doodling no way. Doodling all day, said the waiter. Doodling all night, told the waiter, you was like you and your doodling way. That's the way I'm going to stay. Are you planning things right?
Just a little here, though. Um, and, you know, normally when I do this song, I dedicate to my husband, who's not here. I'll give you, give me background music while I talk. This is great, because I'll tell the story. Um, this is actually off my absolute favorite Sarah record called Swingin' Easy. If you have that record, you know. If you don't have it, go get it. Because it's where she does more, just with a trio, more jazz stuff, but just this song 
ripped my heart out. Um, and it made me think of my husband, um, whom is home watching the baby tonight. <laughs> but hopefully he's watching. And uh, so this is for Mo.
Maybe if you're watching, I'm gonna talk a little bit, I'm sorry, because I like to brag about my husband who's not here, but it's more fun when he's here because then I embarrass him and he hides under the table. <laughs> it's really cute, actually. So I'm from Columbus. I, I went away to school in Boston and then I moved to New York and I lived in New York a very long time and I got tired of doing like four gigs a day for, you know, nothing. Um, <laughs> And I ended up getting some contracts to go overseas and work in some very fancy hotels that paid me a lot of money. So I don't know, live in a five-star hotel and make a lot of money, work four hours a night and get spa packages built into my contract? Yes, please. <laughs> so that's what, <laughs> that's what I did. Um, I went to Vietnam first and then um, spent a few months there. And then I had another contract in India and then I had like a four day vacation and made a stop over in Bangkok because why would I fly back to the US? So I'll just go to Thailand and have a vacation for four days. I um, spoke with a couple of bands there to see if I could get a job. Everything was booked up for a year and a half. And then on my way home from India, I got a call from one of the hotels saying we had to fire our singer on New Year's Eve because she did, got drunk and didn't show up for the ball drop. <laughs> so. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have that problem. So they asked, can you come in three weeks? And I said, yeah. So um, five days into my contract, I was looking for a yoga studio and got super lost and saw Starbucks. And then I sat down at this table and thought, I can have internet and I can like have my drink. They didn't have my drink. They didn't have internet. <laughs> so I'm ready to cry, sitting there just listening to my music. And I noticed a gentleman, a West African gentleman just sitting down that way, and then I noticed another couple of guys behind him, and then these Thai ladies walk up and do this handoff, and I was like, great, I picked the drug dealing Starbucks, fantastic. Because <laughs> when you live in New York and you see that handoff, you know exactly what that is. <laughs> and uh, it, turned out it, it turned out to be the stone, gemstone trade. They trade the stones in public, because they has to be unannounced so they don't get robbed. I didn't know that. And so the man at the next table saw me laughing out loud and said, can I come talk to you? And I said, it's a free country, wait, I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and that man ended up asking for my number. Hell no, I gave him my Facebook because I thought it was a drug dealing Starbucks. And um, almost eight years later, we're married and we have a son and he's now an American citizen. 
Um, we found a way to be married, being from two different countries and two different cultures and religions and backgrounds. We kill each other most of the time, but somehow we make it work. And so that song is very important to me because we, anytime we do something amazing, we do it together. So I know that's not about Sarah Vaughn, that's just about me. <laughs> but so I feel very blessed to have him in my life and be on, be part of the Kamara team. So, um, but uh, I, we're gonna do another little number from that same record. Um, and uh, it's a pretty popular one. Just please don't yell out, shooby dooby. <laughs> because most people know that, that version of it, but this is a lovely little number called Pennies from Hell.
Our modern pennies from heaven. <laughs> Sarah Vaughn interpreting Monk, doing interpreting that. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. Somebody smoked something before they did that. So <laughs> we're gonna bring it down just a little bit. Um, later on in her life, uh, she did. I mean, it's it's funny. I saw this with Ella and with Sarah, where they would do some sort of pop tunes, and then. Sarah, though, got really into Brazilian stuff and released a couple of Brazilian records. And it's when her voice got really deep and really low and gutsy. And actually, really, I really love all stages of her voice. If, if you have a, some videos of her doing like early 50s, you could tell she's new at performing. And she's just sort of out there going, like, she used to work as a classical pianist, actually. Like, she was a trained classical pianist, then she got hired to be a pianist in a, in a rhythm section. Um, she's an incredible pianist. But you could see that she wasn't quite, like, she had just gotten kind of catapulted into this stardom, like, her first kind of TV spot. She's performing, she's kind of like, I'm not sure I'm kind of, and then you, it, but she's got this gorgeous tone that just soars over. Then you get into her later records and you get this guttural sort of velvet, like dark chocolate fudge. That's how I can describe it. Right, right, it's kind of like like melted dark chocolate fudge, just somebody churning it and it's, oh, it's to die for. And that's the voice I heard doing some of this, um, some of this classic Brazilian repertoire. So we're gonna do one of those. It's funny that I need the lyrics to the English because I normally sing this in Portuguese. So I don't actually know the English that well. <laughs> don't get excited. <laughs> I might surprise you, okay? I might surprise you. Sky So vast as a sky With far away clouds 
just wandering by way. Telling stories and noise Stories of love Fell to If I only had words, I would sing all the beautiful things that I see when you're with me. Oh, oh, oh like a song that withers in the trees. Oh, let's me. Ainda 
Eu já adorei de mim Thank you. You don't know, but I'm surprising these guys with what I'm doing up here. I'm not telling them. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's going to be the fun of the show. We're going to do it like the old school guys did it. All right, so um, we thank you so much for uh, sticking around for this first set. We do have more music coming at you. Um, <laughs> woo! All right. Are you guys having a good time? I mean, we're a small crowd, but we're mighty. I believe, I believe in this crowd, okay? You came out, we picked a snowstorm just for you, <laughs> and you came out in the middle of it. I drove from Columbus, so that was fun. I mean, honestly, the roads weren't bad. It's around Akron that they were like, ah, they only need one lane on 71, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that got interesting, but, but we made it up here. We're, we're making it happen, so. We're gonna close with a little swinger and we will be back with another great set for you, okay?
Jeffrey Slater.
have a key. Jeffrey Slater on the bass.
Welcome back. <laughs> this is my telephone operator voice. Somehow never got radio gigs. Wish I could, though. You know. Not that, I mean, who, do you guys listen to the radio anymore? Anybody? Okay, I hear crickets, so not so many people. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when our phones aren't working and, and you don't have Sirius XM, right? <laughs> Um, all right, well, we're gonna, we're gonna move forward with a, I'm doing a lot of songs from my favorite record, um, Swingin' Easy, because it's my favorite record. Um, but I love how Sarah manipulates lyrics. Um, and so this is a, a great Gershwin tune. It's called They Can't Take That Away From Me. The way you wear your hat The way you sip your tea The memory of Thank you. 
Jeffrey Slayer. Now I'm gonna sing about the man that I love, though, don't you know? I love the way he snores in the night and wakes me up with a fright. When he jerks ever so slightly. And I love the way he looks in a suit and the way he smells so sweet. Every lady's turning her head. No, honey, girl, you can't take that man to bed because he's my special treat. He may never, never meet again on this bumpy road to love. Still, I'll always keep the memory alive. The way you hold a hold your life, the way we dance. My husband's really not here because I'm telling all these stories about him. <laughs> He's always the one that's like, you snore, no, you snore, no, you snore. <laughs> Just depends on the night who wakes you up, right? So um, we, we love that tune. Uh, one thing that, you know, El Ella was always the, one of the great, you know, we have the great singers, right? We had Ella, we had Billy and Sarah, Amy Horn, Carmen McRae, you know, all of these, all of the greats, right? But Sarah was never really known for doing scat, but she could do it, and really well. And um, Ella was always the queen of scatting and improvising, but Sarah was, was bad. <laughs> she was really bad. She was really, really bad as in good, if you don't understand the, the lingo, you dig. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we're gonna do um, a scat number of hers. And this is actually a transcription because it's just too cool. I don't need to change it. So this is called Shooty Ba.
Changed a little in the middle, but that is actually her solo, and that tells you that woman could scat, absolutely. But um, I, I love doing that little number, and actually, uh, when I've done that in years past, I've taken it really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and you just never know what tempo I'm going to call it at. Um, but I actually want to uh, skip the next tune and go to the ballad. And this is a, a song from a movie, actually. Um, who was in that movie originally? Was it Bradley Moore? And then they redid it with yeah. Jude, Jude Law, right? I think so, they, did, they redid it in like the 2000s. It's a movie called Alfie. And this is a song by Burt Bacharach and this is the theme from Alfie. I'm trying new songs for you guys tonight. I actually put together a new selection of songs and a new show for you. So you're not getting the Columbus show. You're getting your own show. <laughs> I just have to remember all the new lyrics. <laughs>
Was it all? to be
without true love we just exist until you find the love you missed you're Let your heart lead the way, and you'll find love any day. I'll be. No, it's a 60s movie, and you know, not everybody loves Burt Bacharach. I mean, there's something wrong with you if you don't, but um, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, if you don't like Stevie Wonder, go see a doctor. There's just certain people that, you know, sorry. Um, but I love this song because of the lyric, and Dionne Warwick was actually the one who made this song popular, but I live for Sarah singing this song because it is the most beautiful lyrics and I just want to read a little bit to you. What's it all about, Alfie? Is it just for the moment we live? What's it all about when you sort it out, Alfie? Are we meant to take more than we give? Or we are, are we meant to be kind? And if only fools are kind, then I guess it's wise to be cruel. And if life belonged only to the strong, what will you lend on a golden rule? And to say, I believe in love. Without true love, we just exist. Wow. They don't write songs like that anymore. <laughs> Most of the time, it's booty, 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 rocket everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, like it just doesn't, you know. It's Friday, hey. You know, like, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, you know, when people ask me why I sing jazz, it's that. And <clears throat> Sarah was a master at delivering these lyrics where they just punch you in your gut. And so if there's anything that I could learn from her, hopefully I've picked up a little bit of that um, because she just had this way. I, I don't want to hear anyone else sing Rush Light ever because she had this way of really just um, ripping your heart out, and then at the same time doing something that every singer is just going, what did she just do? Um, so I, I thank you so much for that. Um, we're going to move along and do something a little more improvising. Doesn't have to have a
Doesn't have to have a 
Because the person who invented high heels, definitely a man, and I mean, I'm just saying, the tights are clean, I took a shower today, no one should smell anything from the front row, but we have like, yeah, I dropped a couple inches. We have a couple songs left, and um, I just realized that I'm not 25 anymore, and I can't wear heels anymore. <laughs> you just reach a certain point where you're like, I'm done, but I'm wearing like a half-length skirt, so what do I do with that? Um, so I'm gonna invest in more long evening gowns and long dresses, <laughs> so I don't have to do that. Um, but I think Ed and I were gonna try, are you guys cool if we keep it mellow too for the last couple songs? Because we, we have like three more, but I think we might just keep it mellow if that's okay. And um, I would like to do something with Ed and have him try something totally unrehearsed. And yes, unrehearsed. Sarah did this really interesting, when I talked earlier about songs that you definitely heard the, the, the producer say like, yeah, we gotta do this tune. I'd be really surprised if she came up with this arrangement. She used to, she did a Beatles album. She covered Beatles tunes. Um, not my favorite arrangement of this song, because it's very disco. <laughs> when you think Sarah Bond, you don't think disco. Um, and I, we sat there, and I, it's disco, right? Like you listen to it, you're like, whoa, okay, this is different. Um, but Ella did something kind of similar in some of her shows. She would kind of keep that as well. So like do a little pop number, keep the kids interested. So, <laughs> but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it differently. We're gonna do it totally unrehearsed. Yeah. And we are going to see where we go with it. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, that is the homework for today. <laughs> that is the assignment. Sarah and these singers were masters at weaving stories and songs and melodies. And the number one person that they relied on in the band was they're a accompanist on whatever chordal instrument they chose, usually piano. And so I, one of my favorite, I always talk about him because he's one of my favorites because he was Ella's musical director, he was Sarah's musical director for a while. Tommy Flanagan is one of my favorites to listen to because he's just a master at that. You can hear, he hears absolutely everything. And so Ed is one of those people too. And we did our first gig Last summer, was it? Yeah, I, so. I had a, I had a, 
political private party that I got hired to sing in Akron. I'm from Columbus, no nobody there. And called some people around Akron, Cleveland area and I got hooked up with Ed and we were just sound checking. And from the moment that he started playing, I started like just doing a few things over top and then all of a sudden we're playing something totally improvised for like five minutes straight. And we were like, well this is gonna be a fun gig and it really was. So I very much appreciate Ed and getting hooked up with Ed because that's actually how I met Eric Everett and Eric Everett Jazz and Jeff Slater and, and I got hooked up with these guys through you so thank you very much and for bringing me to Cleveland in the first place. So thank you Ed <laughs> and thank you Eric because you guys have been instrumental for me being here so I appreciate that. Let's do the track. <clears throat> of the night. this
I love him. <clears throat> Jens, you can come up. We just had to have a moment, you know. That song is, I, 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 somebody told me they like the personal stories, so I'm putting some personal stories. You know, I, I didn't like Sarah's arrangement, but I was so surprised by the choice of material and hearing her do that live, she, and, and some of the Beatles songs live. She really bends and twists like that, but that song is very special to me um, because um, I came back from Asia and from New York and came home, and right away I had my son. And it was a very big shock because I hadn't really lived in Ohio full time since I was 17. Um, and I was away for 15 years, so don't do the math. I'm just going to move along before you do the math. Um, but um, it was a shock leaving my university teaching job and lean leaving to actually two university teaching jobs and doing international performances and for heads of state and then to come home. And in three months, I did a few gigs, and then in three months, like, hey, you're having a baby. Hey, like, you're back living with your folks because you guys moved with two suitcases each and that was it. And it was a shock. And there's something that happens in the jazz world and it's not just the jazz world, it's the professional world as well. When a woman has a baby, somehow she's not as serious about what she does. And, you know, there's, there's always that that sort of thing about, you, you know, that was your life choice. Well, okay, when men go and <laughs> like take care of their children, everyone's really, what a great dad you are. <laughs> like, you gotta see that TikTok video of this woman singing, you're such a great dad. It's hilarious, because it's really what it is. It's, you know, um, and, and with music, they assume that, okay, well, this part of your life is, is done. And so for a long time, I felt really just like my world had turned upside down. And so that line of, you know, you were only waiting for your moment to be free <laughs> really means a lot to me to be on the stage and sing that because it's part of who you are when you do what we do. It's, it's a limb in your body. And when it's taken away from you, you still feel it, but it's not there. And so I'm just so grateful to be back on the stage years later and still singing. And I don't care if there are five people in the audience <laughs> or if there are 500. It is always my privilege to perform for you and sing for all of you. And so I thank you guys for sharing that with us and to make music with wonderful musicians like this. So thank you so much for coming out and braving a snowstorm this evening. And don't get me wrong, I love my son. He's not allowed at my gigs because he will run up and try to play the drums and run and play the piano and then the whole time go, that's mommy, that's mommy. So he's not allowed here. <laughs> but we're going to close out with, um, I don't even need to introduce it. We're just going to play it. But I want to say thank you to Sarah for teaching me and so many other singers, the, the gift that is storytelling, that is weaving melodies, that is being a true artist and touching the divine with your music. So thank you very much.
I'm as helpless as the kitten up a tree. And I feel like I'm clinging to a cloud. I can't understand. I get misty. And a thousand violins begin to play. Oh, it might be the sound of the That music I hear is the moment you're Say that you
Thank you very much. Ed Ridley on the keys. Jeffrey Slater on the bass. The man, the myth, the legend. Eric Everett on the drums. Eric Everett Jazz. My name is Laura Kamara. Thank you so much. We hope to come back to the Bob Stop again. And thank you, Cleveland, for having me. Have a great night.